Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to the Trifles Podcast. Oh my God! Oh, it's nice to be back. Hey, um, how was how was your how was your trip? I saw so many pictures of you at that, Disneyland yeah, down in FL. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just come back from Florida. I just I I was actually late to this podcast recording because I overslept yeah. because of you know jet lag. But um, and also I didn't set alarm. I just I mean you had a lovely week of weather here anyway, right? Oh man, wasn't it? It's been glorious. I love it when it's sunny out, but also a hurricane at the same time. That's great. That's Apparently this is going to be the, the coldest June in, on record or something stupid like that. It has to have been the coldest May on record. It, it was dog shit. May was it's dog It's usually shit. nice here in May. Usually we have our summer in May here and right. then the rest of the summer is not great. But not this year. It has been really bad. There, were, there was like, it was actual coat weather in May quite often. If I, I have my window open in my little office here and, and there was like a chill breeze coming in all day mm-hmm. and I found that now I'm getting older I uh, I feel cold a lot of the time compared to my kids who are walking around with like a t-shirt shorts no socks no slippers and they're just like oh it's hot in here and I'm like freezing cold I, I hate it but uh yeah so June is not going to offer any respite I'm sorry yeah I'm, I'm the same like the first day at Disney World I was wearing jeans I was just like, it was like 30 degrees and I was like, I'm fine wearing jeans all day. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I did actually buy some shorts and nice. wear those for the rest of the week. And nice. Did, were they um, like goof troop shorts or did you get some, <laughs> um, did you get some, uh, some Scrooge McDuck ones or um, d- Ducktales. I, it, what, do, what, what did you combo with? Uh, like, so you had your Goof Troop shorts on, but your Ducktales undies on underneath, or like, what was the combo? Uh, yeah, so I had my Mickey Mouse gloves. Right. I had those uh, big white boots. I, I, I bought. I, I actually did buy some some Walt Disney World T-shirts when I was there. I just thought it was fun. Yeah. To embrace the the spirit of Disney of mm-hmm, being yeah. of being at a place. Also, people respond differently to you when you're wearing clothes that are saying local things. Like I bought like a few things when I was in St. Pete, which is Boba's hometown in Florida. St. Petersburg, isn't it? Not yeah, but yeah. no one calls it that. And yeah. I, yeah. you know, so you have again, like, let's embrace. You have to embrace the local shit, right? I just want um, to, for anyone who's not aware and just wants to be clear about where you yeah, are. Yeah, they might be looking St. Pete's, right? So we did I'm two sure days. They would in, find it. We did two days in. Walt Disney World. Two days at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. That's the yeah, one over we've... on the East Coast, right? Near that's yes. Orlando. That's the Orlando one. Yeah. How did you get resort. there? Did you drive? No. Did you take a magic shuttle bus? Oh, um, well, Boba's did friend. Did you go on the monorail? Picked us up from the airport. Oh, and so you flew um, into Orlando. Yeah. Is that right? Then you went straight to Disneyland or World yeah. or whatever it is, and then you went from there to St. Petersburg. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you get to St. Petersburg? I mean, an Uber. How? Oh, fuck me. That's quite a drive. Yes, yeah, so a two-hour Uber. Which oh. Jesus fine. Christ. It you wasn't even that you, bad. It was like you didn't $80. want to get a hire car or something like that? It was like, it wasn't even, it was $80. Or was like another flight? Cost, like, can you not get like a little domestic <laughs> flight? <laughs> it was just on the, hours, you just man, sit on the freeway for two hours. It's fine, actually. Wow. It's fine. And did it rain um, a lot when you were in Florida? Because I always find boiling hot during the day and humid, and then in the evening there's always a... A thunderstorm, but that might be a coastal thing. I don't know if that's the same in land. So uh, apparently, it does rain a lot, um, and it did rain a few days we were there. But it it was kind of funny. It was kind of like their rain is not at least when I was there. The rain was not real rain. You know, oh, I'm right. used to it raining you in the UK. At the rain. You, laughed you laughed at laughed, their rain. Mocked their rain. It was it was kind of half assed rain, like you know? pussy it, rain. Yeah, did, <laughs> that didn't <sounds> really fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> That was a Prince song, wasn't it? Pussy rain, pussy rain. I wonder if it would have been a number one hit if it had been called Pussy Rain. I think it would be that these days. Yeah, there was yeah. this guy we were, the guy in the Uber, two hour Uber, he was playing the most relentless gangster rap. Um, nice. The most modern one. It, like The lyrics were like, it's just about eating pussy this and rain getting money. This rain shit. The rain where I'm from is better. Like, I, we have better, we got harder rain. And I wondered, like that kind and of- I even like looked at, I looked at Boba and, and she said afterwards, like, yeah, this is like worse than normal. I wonder whether he's not a native English speaker and he didn't like know that it was that bad, you know? Yeah. Because it was real bad. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so... Did two, we did two days at Walt Disney World, which is which is interesting. Like we did, um, we did like it was interesting walking around the Star Wars Land and uh, the Epcot and things like this. And 
don't know, like it's cool. It's a cool place. It was very like overwhelming. Yeah. You know, there's so much to see, so much going on. See, do you've so, been to the one in um Anaheim, right? The 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 California one you went. Yeah, you must have I've gone been, when we went to BlizzCon one one year, right? I've been I've I've done a day at, at Disneyland Japan. I've done I've been to Euro Disney, I've been to Anaheim. Oh, so you're not like it wasn't like this like a first timer experience. Like you kind of I'm knew familiar what, with Disney. Yeah, sure, very yeah. familiar. So Did you did you stay at Disneyland? We did. We stayed at the um the Wilderness Lodge, which is like the Twin Peaks. Style oh, yeah. oh, we the saw big, the yeah, yeah you we sent saw us that the picture. picture. Yeah, so you, you guys stayed, stayed there? there. Yeah, yeah, we stayed there. For wow, a couple of nights. So it was does Disney own really cool. Twin Peaks? No, no, it's just themed that way. But There's can they of, do that? Well, yeah, it's not. It's not like themed, anything. It's not themed after. It just looks very f- similar, just because oh. of the just the location that Twin Peaks is filmed in, and a lot of like the the sort of buildings and stuff that they oh, used. Oh, I gotcha. it, 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 it it fits well with what they were trying to do there sort of thing totally yeah um it's it's i don't it was i don't know just it's really kind of well done you know there's a lot of themed stuff there and yeah i think disney's new idea is to build these sections of the park that it's always been the idea like to immerse you into yeah like a world a zone right and um it's done really well in the modern ones the avatar and the um star wars ones yeah certainly like done really really works to like make you feel like you're in a place there's a there's definitely a sense of wonder it's very very cool so yeah i had a really good time there um and then we we drove to st pete and st pete st pete is i think it's like the fifth biggest city in florida so, mm. so it's not like some of the people know behind jacksonville you know, I, i've never heard of it before do you know what I mean? miami um, and orlando those are the only then, three places i know oh yeah. and uh, was it um the, the place where key lime pie is from was it um Tampa. Like, oh yeah, Tampa. Forgot yeah. about. I always forget about Tampa. Yeah, and it, so so, <laughs> it's it's kind of like, like inverted commas small, but it looks like all American cities, right? It's a grid with um with big roads and 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 everything, you know, all the all the regular shit. Oh wait, um, Saint Petersburg is on the coast. Yes, it's on the west west side. Oh, I thought she was an inland Floridian, which is like. The scary Floridians, but she's coastal. That's not as bad. Okay. Yeah, I don't know really why she wants to come and stay with us because she's a big Anglophile, right? She's yes. a big. Um, she loves I- England. Wants to be in Harry Potter. No, I don't know. Do you know what I mean she's, Saint Petersburg? It looks beautiful. It's like beautiful coastal. It's got like all the marinas and water and good weather and. Maybe it's just fucking boring. I don't know. I it's, mean, I, I well, wouldn't want to live in Florida. I don't know. I don't know. It, I, she, she says it's like a, sw- it's a swamp. So it's very hot and humid a lot of the year, and it's kind of gross. You got gators. Outside and you got gators coming up out of the water. You got gators down you got, there. You got gators down there in St. Pete's. I never seen a gator bigger when I saw St. Pete's. So help me up. Stuck me up, took my wallet. <laughs> it was playing gangster rap driving an Uber. So I'm busy. I was in there for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> all there all, all the lyrics and um... music where I'm going to pull you in the water and roll you over until you're dead. <laughs> I'm going to eat you. I'm going to eat that bison. It was unbelievable. There's signs everywhere saying, you know, Gators. Feed, the gators. feed the gators. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't swim in any water, basically. Oh, fucking like, hell. Um... We got sharks. We got gators. We got. Crabs, whatever. We, we we saw some. We went to like a bit of um water or crabs or gators. Well, there's there's like you know how the whole of America down there. has been paved over, right? Yeah. There's there's like it's like basically you know like one percent of this area had not been paved over, and it was like residual swamp land that remains. But even then, there's like signs around it saying. This is not how the swamp land was originally. We're regenerating it. Do you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> like, like it went to this sort of big, big old. I say big. It's like you know, three city blocks worth of nature park kind of thing. It's got like a little lake there, and it's got like you know a little walk and stuff. And there were some baby gators that we saw swimming around um, in in nature. Well, I'm um, going to say that I went to a, I went to a, a gator park in um, on the other side of uh, for a, near Saint, in Saint Augustine where my dad uh, lived. Uh, for a while it's um saint augs you mean saint augs that's what people call it yeah they don't call it saint augustine they call it saint augs um over there and uh they had like an albino alligator that was like the star of the show uh they they had you could buy food and throw it to the gators and they all sort of 
Because there's not like a couple of them. They, you fucking chuck them in there like a pit of snakes. You know what I mean? I think because yeah. they're reptiles, they can just bump along. They don't need a huge amount of space. They chill most of the time anyway. And then they had a big statue of the biggest alligator they'd ever had. And this thing was like the length of a car. It was enormous. Um, but at the same time, it's like, they're, they're kind of interesting. But it was like, after two hours, first of all, they, they're quite smelly. And second of all, they didn't really do much. Like, once you've seen them go, Nom! and eat something, and the guy shows you that a toddler could hold an alligator's mouth shut, like, you barely have to hold it shut. They have no opening muscles. It's all closing muscles. So they can open their mouths, but they're, they're very weak, which is why you can literally put a rubber band around them, their, their sort of snoot, and um, they can't open their mouths. That's how they, they, they sort of keep them. You can do that with uh, lobster claws as well. Really? You so they can't rubber... open them very well. No, That's why they put, put rubber bands on them. Oh, that makes you sense. You can put rubber bands around them, and then they, won't op- they can't open their, their pincers, Interesting. their claws. Did really you cruel. ever see those at the, uh, at the supermarket? You know, like they used to have yeah. lobsters in the, in the tanks. Yeah, they used yeah, to just have I... rubber bands on there. I watched a YouTube true. video of a guy who bought one and rescued it and like he- nursed it back to health. Which nice. is like the Simpsons, very Mr. Pinchy. Oh god, that, that maybe I just watched The Simpsons. Yeah, maybe it was The Simpsons. <laughs> and then he has a bath with Mr. Pinchy and accidentally cooks him. That that uh, that's it's a classic. The Simpsons have done it as as you would expect. So no, there were um, the, like, they're walking through this nature park. Was like you know how you walk through a nature park in England and it's quite quiet. It's mm-hmm. quite serene yep. in yeah. the forest. It's not much going on. There's nothing uh, to attack you. Yeah. In no. Florida, it's like the noisiest experience. Like every <laughs> bush you walk past rustles, right? I'm not <laughs> even joking, like suspiciously rustles. They got the cicadas going as well, right? There's 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 noise constantly. There's lizards running out of the path in front of you. There's flies like running away from the lizards and running away. There's like little gribbles groveling around and <laughs> scrabbling around constantly and there's 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 squirrels and there's birds and there's everything it's all fighting each other for life is leaping out of the ground but i mean mm. it's it's a swamp land it's got everything it's got hot weather it's got water it's got lots of food sources in the smaller life forms you know gators it's kind of it's kind of very i don't know just it's just it's just it's got a lot of a lot of life and none of it's particularly colorful or interesting do you know what i mean but you remember that jackass segment where they were dangling over a crocodile pit with chicken hanging off their undies you remember that right and then the crocodile would like reach up and eat the the, the dangling chicken off of their oh it's not it wasn't undies it looked like jock straps with like uh with like sure. big big chickens dangling off and then that the, does seem the gators a little would bit eat them off like Florida, like I got a general impression because we went to the Florida Aquarium um, in Tampa and it, it was really cool, but I got the general impression that people were a little bit more reckless when it came to wildlife in Florida. Just a right. little bit more. They see, it, they see it as their plaything rather than sort of admiring the, the natural splendor of it all. I think they've just gotten used to the idea of gators being in your back garden. Right. right and and critters and varmint being up in your face, right? Because there was we were at the beach one day and Ped held up a, well he didn't hold up a cookie he was eating a cookie and a seagull just you know like like it happens in Bristol sometimes so what, a seagull grab your sausage roll yeah, but, yeah. but that 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 seagull then called like fifty more and then an army like then sort of slightly <laughs> aggressively <laughs> went for any anything that. <laughs> That it was like an open, you know, an open box of food. But 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 like yeah, yeah, in the aquarium, it's 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 quite open, right? There's um there is obviously an alligator tank, but it's um it's more closed. But a lot of it is like there's a lot of ducks and a lot of birds just kind of loose in there, and and, and like there's this pelican with this huge huge you know it's huge pelican and it's like six inches away, you know, not not in a not in a cage, not in a tank, just can flap around and there's this there's just huge birds and all sorts of stuff in there and they've also got three exhibits where you can touch animals right mm-hmm. which is or touch underwater animals which is not very common at least in the uk big there's a big um pool of manta rays so i don't know oh, yeah. manta rays, you're not meant rays. to uh i mean i know that there, there are places but I, as i understand it the well um, i hear you were spent it, yeah. I don't say I was just sticking my hand. I don't know why to touch all that stuff. Like, uh, like I, I'm fine just looking at it. You know, I don't feel like an overwhelming urge to put my hands on it. You know, of that I think stuff. it's nice for kids because they're first me, of all, yeah. kids are very touch oriented. It is for yeah. kids. And second of all, I think it, it does teach them that 
these are living things and not just like yeah sure but if you if you if you're letting your kids touch stuff don't they then grow up into adults who just want to touch weird stuff as well i think so but that's i think i was never allowed to touch the the sea life when we went places that or pet like the animals or whatever i mean that's probably good honestly like i think there are some animals you can pet but I think it you definitely kind of... feels odd, yeah. but I think they've they've thought about it very carefully. So the first one is this huge tank of rays, and they're basically like little puppies. Yeah, they, yeah. They want to come and be touched, or else they wouldn't be coming as close to the people as as I don't know if they want to be touched. But people are very gentle usually, you know, and they're quite quick. And anyway, that was it was it was, it was kind of well done. The other two tanks are one is of. Um, moon jellyfish right which are basically these just they're just like the plants. shittest jellyfish yeah they really are they're basically plants um <laughs> they're, 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 they don't stay they don't have a brain they don't have any kind of nervous system at all in fact i don't think they're just they're they're about as close to a plant as you could imagine that there it's interesting to to touch them because when you touch them it doesn't feel like you're touching anything at all really yeah they're bizarre and then there's a I, tank I think of, if, if you had um, to come back as a life form jellyfish is way down Place. Oh like, my god! There's nothing going on there. I don't even know what their perception is. Do they just float around and food touches their tentacles and that's it? I mean, they, they don't. Do they propel themselves around? Yeah, somehow, they do. Or do that, they, just they do like that, the that weird or? bob move, don't they? Where they yeah. just like so, well, some, they, some, some of them. Do. I don't know what do. the point of them is. Yeah. I mean, does the 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 man of war? What is it? The Portuguese man of war just floats on the top of the the ocean. His tentacles dangle down yeah. does it steer or is it just like wherever i go i go it's uh, philosophically fair enough but i Dol- think as, dolphins as an experience, look like they have fun the, they look like they have fun I think, and for sure. uh, and sea lions do too they're yeah. always like horsing around aren't they chasing boats and i think a killer whale would be pretty pretty cool to, to be as yeah, well. they, yeah they communicate quite a lot they like, do yeah you ever smart. seen them triangulate a kill before it's yeah, yeah. Uh, insane yeah watch and watch this kids he's gonna triangulate this kid yeah yeah they got they they got all these fucking tricks like they can they can create a big wave to push yeah. things off of an iceberg and oh shit. my god i've seen it all i love <laughs> god it god damn that's i mean i i when it comes to jellyfish, I yeah, I think I just want to pet one. Shit. You know, I just want to get my hands on. I just one. want to touch them. Yeah, there is an interesting one though. The um, there's like an upside down jellyfish. It just looks like a regular one, except they they only like sit on the bottom upside down and they right. they barely swim. They look like little sea anemones. Yeah, but there's also the most interesting jellyfish is the Portuguese man of war. I suggest yeah. you look it up. But it's the one which is made of like five different organisms that are. Unique. Oh, really? And they, so like, it's not like one thing. together. Yeah. Yeah. There's like the 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 sail part. There's like the the brain part or whatever. The the there's like this the the wibble the tentacles part. And they're all different organisms that they grow sep. Like like oh, it's, it's got really like weird. a porpoise's legs, a whale's cock. Um, it's got uh, a monkey's <laughs> eyes, and you know, it's like a big mix of 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 everything all the greats <laughs> yeah it's like a greatest hits compilation it's actually super weird um, so it's actually like, not a jellyfish well the no, it's a monstrosity it's a it's technically si- siphonophore a, yeah a siphonophore yeah it's a colonial organism made up of many smaller units called zooids can i uh, wow. can i just say on so, the topic zooids. of um jellyfish because i i don't know about you lewis but you sent me some pictures because you were uh you were perusing some chihuly while you were there and Ooh, that sounds all, like uh all, all of his something all of his stuff reminds me of jellyfish you know like all the <laughs> all the big elaborate glass things yeah they just look yeah. like big jellyfish well so so i think he had a studio so we when we were in seattle we saw this guy dale chihuly who is quite is famous Jim? in the world of glass? I think it's Jim. Is art. it Jim? Jim Chihuly or da- we Dale? We always say his Dale. name wrong. Chuck. Um, Dale Chuck Chihuly. Chihuly, and he's he's this kind of odd guy. He's got one eye. Yeah, um, and he's kind it of. It is Dale. He's got, it is Dale. Wow! Patch. Holy shit! God, he's eighty-one. Yeah. He's eighty-one now. Yeah. So he has. He must have a studio in Florida because I was going to ask you this. He creates these really big pieces, and I don't know how you would transport them across the country without bits of them breaking off and stuff you, like that. you gotta pack them in jellyfish that's right the key. Yeah. yeah yeah i guess but like they must weigh a ton but also like how the hell would you move them you know what i mean god no exactly you can't exactly just put them in a put them in an amazon like we're not talking about know. just like a little you know table ornament or something these things are like 
the ones we saw in Seattle, some of them were like the size of a building. Like it's insane. It's yeah. all it's all mangled up glass. They it look they look nice. There's one, there's one at Kew Gardens, I believe. Oh, there one you go. His, yeah. How the fuck did that get over there? You must have done it on site, right? Like you must. Have I mean, just I, done I a... think they can ship these things. I mean, you know, you just can't pack it very carefully and and move it and to put careful all over it and pay some special company to move shit. I bet there's I bet there's a company out there whose well, entire the, thing is moving big, artworks. Yeah, but if it's a big glass thing like it, even on a container ship or something yeah that thing is getting smashed up there's no way well right? i think i noticed I know though, that's true. Sips, gone. sips i noticed this little secret to it though there is a central buyer or hub and everything is connected to that. Yeah, that's right. so in fact, I think right? what you can do is you can. Sectional. I think you can unscrew all of the oh, individual leaves of and plants oh, and then I reassemble see. it. See. So, yeah. do you reckon when when Dale You've does an art, ruin like the that, magic for me? <laughs> I have. Sorry. He, he puts like instructions with it how to reassemble the the glass. Uh, I would imagine he went out there and did it himself. Uh, oh, or just had to one make of his sure. Goons yeah, do it, maybe one of his assistants. I think I think it's interesting because um, St. Pete is a sort of centre for glass art, right? Because there's a couple of other big artists out there who do glass stuff. And mm. I noticed it was a recurring theme when I was out there. There's a couple of glass museums. And I actually went to this other one. I think it was Dun Duncan McClellan's sort of art, art gallery. And I saw, so I went in there. And this is on one of the days when um, I was on my own. And, um, well, I think Pat had gone to sleep early or something. I was just on my own and I went in there and there's no one in there. This it's incredible museum that he has set up in this old sort of warehouse and it's got all these really, really cool pieces of art, mostly from glass, mostly all glass, obviously from, from either local people or people who are selling it locally or people who've come there and done like a residency. Like you, have you seen the, the blown, the, that, that Netflix show, what's it called? Blown apart or whatever. Yeah. Or blown I, th away? I, I think a little bit. And, and then it was like, this is the same every, like it's just, it's it's like the Mrs. F watches the the sewing bee and the pottery show and all the rest of them. Oh yeah, they're all the same. Like unless you're really into pottery or sewing, it's essentially the same thing every single episode, which is comforting and nice. And there's slight variations, and you could say that about cooking. But the difference with the cooking shows is, I can copy that quite easily by getting the ingredients and following a recipe. Most cooking is something that you can replicate yourself, but. I ain't gonna fucking suddenly get a potter's wheel and a bunch of clay and a kiln and all that shit. And I'm also not gonna get all the stuff you need for sewing to do sewing. So I think for the cooking shows, even though they are quite samey, you're getting something from it where you're learning a technique or you're gonna copy it or you're gonna try a recipe. So I kind of understand that a bit more than the sewing shows. And the this is exactly show. what I thought. Like when it comes to doing like some art stuff, like abstract art or, or like printing stuff. I, I'm fairly familiar with how all that works, and and when I go to a modern art museum, I'm like, oh, I can see how this was done. Right. But when it comes to glass art, I have no fucking idea. I've watched a few guys do glass blowing, and I've seen the show, but but it's still completely fucking mind blowing to me how some of these things get made. Anyway, the, the glass art is this big thing. There's lots of people doing it. There's lots of people who are incredibly good. Even a couple of people from Bristol, because we have a blue glass thing here in Bristol, and there are a couple of Bristol artists Bristol in this place. Bristol blowers. So yeah, that's it's kind of, I should know more of big about it, maybe, but I don't. Anyway, walking around this place, and um, this old lady starts talking to me, and you know, because everyone does in Florida, it's everyone, everyone talks to you. And as soon as they, as soon as you reply, they know you're not from Florida, and they say, oh, where are you from? And you know, then you have to tell tell people where you're from and then you get drawn into a conversation. So I'm turning to this nice old lady and she's sort of giving me a tour around and then someone sort of overhears that I'm from Bristol and she says, oh, we got some stuff from this Bristol guy. And so she takes me around to, to show me more stuff and this different lady showing me more stuff. And so then I'm I'm back out on the shop floor and I notice there's this like kind of, it's beautifully coiffured, lovely art gallery and there's one sort of very messy desk, right? Just on the side with like a bucket as a bin. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. really like the shittiest desk. And behind it, there's this sort of guy um, twiddling his thumbs and um and so he he was sort of talking to me a little bit as well and from behind the desk so i sort of came over and i was like oh so have you done any of the art here and he's like yeah i've got a couple of pieces and it turns out he's actually the guy duncan duncan mcclell imagine if you went into the jim chihuly thing and yeah. jim chihuly was there dale. whatever not even dale. Jim, sorry dale dale <laughs> and so i was kind of like surprised because you'd never right, necessarily dale. see and he was like oh yeah you've been talking to my my mother-in-law and my wife there. And I was like, oh my God, this is like a fat, it's like a family run yeah. 
thing. And they, they were setting up and, and they had this like beautiful garden out the back where he'd like planted all the plants and he, and he had like these five, oh, by the way, everything there is like five grand or 10, 10 grand. One of the sculptures was like 50 grand. Yeah, you gotta go um, big it, though. It's, oh, it's, it's expensive. Ins- you gotta go big. I know, they really do go big. Anyway, outside, beautiful garden, decorated with all these five grand sculptures just sitting out in the open, you know, huge place. And so, and obviously- Did you buy a couple? I, I just thought, I, 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 I couldn't really, I didn't want to risk bringing any back sips. It's, 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 ah, it's plane, perfectly you know. safe. They, you know, those big fucking glass things that Dale does, they, they ship them all over the damn place. <laughs> They're modular. <laughs> you can screw this. them together and stuff. So They're right. No, they fine. all come off the main shaft. Yeah, You're right, yeah. they do. So I, I just thought it was like super wholesome, super weird. Um, had this, you know, I think everyone generally, I think it's, it's America, right? So some people, most people are living in regular s- situations, but I think there is a wealthy aspect of St. Pete. I went to this, um, Saturday morning market, right? And you walk around and every stall, I shit you not, you could roll a dice and on that, that you could roll two dice, right? The first dice says gluten-free, vegan, organic, homemade, spiritual, you know, yeah. all that wank, all the wanky stuff. And then the other dice says kombucha, broccoli, pancakes, radishes, muffins, cheese, right? Toothpaste, whatever. And you roll those two dice and that is a stall. Someone there is selling some fucking artisanal, you know, botanical, locally sourced, homemade, homegrown yeah. mushrooms, right? And that that's... That's what they're. That's their stall, and they're sold out. By this is very clock, much right? the opposite of the um, image of Florida that I'm sold regularly. Well, well, that's because that's like I said, this is coastal Florida, it's slightly oh. different. I think it's it's more up market. It's more like I think I, I saw there was a board there, and it was like someone had put this board up, and it said, "What is the answer written on the top?" Okay, in like in like felt tip pen, uh-huh. and other people had come around and written their answers on this board. Right. So what do you think the answers were on the board? Uh, dial 515-384-7878 for Better a call great, great blowjob. Yeah. For a good time. No, that was not on there. No. <laughs> it was uh, Jesus was on there, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jesus! Jesus is the reason for the season. <laughs> well, what is the answer? Jesus. Um, but someone also wrote like, Sunshine. Someone wrote the beach. Someone wrote eating clean. Um, someone wrote family. Someone wrote forty two as the old hitchhiker's guide. Of you know course, what is yeah. the meaning of life? Yeah. In fact, so, so I wondered what you guys would have would have thought. Um, I, I don't. I don't uh, have any answers. I don't like to write. So there, there are your answers. Hey, I got a story for you guys talking about mystical stuff. I saw this. <laughs> I saw this this morning, and this really cracked me up. Here's the headline. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Swimmers brave dangerous tides to collect rock from Yuri Geller's island. Oh. A no. group of adventurers have swum to an uninhabited Scottish island to collect a rock for celebrity magician, that's how they describe him, Yuri Geller. So this is like an island is in the middle of the Is he a celebrity magician? I, I don't he's believe not he active is. I would anymore. say con man would be how I would. No, but play. is he even? Does he even do shows or anything anymore? I, don't I mean, know, this dude. is a name from like thirty years ago. Yeah, he's yeah. a tabloid guy now. I think he's you know? not even though. He, I don't. No, think he does a- things. I think what he does is when they, he he's he's very good at PR somehow, where he's he's able to people. I think for a laugh, will tack him onto the end of a news story, like uh, we well, asked Yuri Geller, or he big- will put out a statement. I did this. It wasn't the reason his big that, claim to fame that he was Michael Jackson's favorite magician or something like that. Yeah, he was friends with Michael Jackson. He's like meant to be this quite spiritual guy. He's got a right. museum, apparently. So, see, he has a the, the new Yuri Geller Museum. This opened uh, a little while ago. He's 75. He's opened a museum. Uh, this is in Israel. It has the world's largest steel spoon. The museum displays um, an incredible collection of original items owned by Yuri. <laughs> yeah, so this is like a museum about Yuri Geller. It's got a 4.5 um, rating on TripAdvisor. So he met a lot of famous people and he would bend a spoon in front of them, and that's how he got started, really. Right. Um, stopping clocks with his mind, bending spoons, all these little tricks that he would do. Like, he's just, he's always been that guy who, you know, cheats, basically, and, and, and lies. 
Um, so he, apparently he suffered a crushing humiliation on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He had prepared a table with silverware on which Geller proved unable to demonstrate his mental powers convincingly, something he blamed on the hostile atmosphere. So he sort of went on TV to show that he yeah. could bend spoons and none of them could, because of course it's a trick, right? Of course it's a trick. So yeah. I, I don't mind if it, it, it is a clever trick. And I remember when I was a kid, I was very impressed by it. I'm thinking, wow, he can bend spoons. Of course he can't. Any more than, than you know, uh, a magician can just guess your card from a deck of 52. It's a trick. It's a trick. If you want to dress it up as, as mental sort of, you know, gymnastics or say, oh, it's, it's all my psychic powers, don't also take that into your day-to-day -day life. And that's what he's done. He claims that this island he bought is a very mystical place. He called it the most mystical place in the world. That's the kind of shit that drives me up the wall, is when he has to say, if this is a magical island, but we still haven't figured out how mystical it is. Please collect rocks from it so I can display them in my museum in Israel. And he's, these people volunteered to do it, and it, they swam out. Apparently, it was a very dangerous swim, and getting onto this island is near impossible. It's, an, it's just a rock in the ocean, in, in the sea, the Firth of Forth of Scotland. It's really not some magical place. It's just a basalt rock or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that's why people have a problem with Yuri Geller, is it's not enough for him to just be a magician or whatever he is. He also has to make out this is, no, 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 this is real. This is, yes. I'm actually psychic. I think some other illusionists like Darren Brown admit and are very open that they're going to trick you and then you're still Absolutely. impressed when you're tricked, right? Whereas he has been committed to this bullshit forever. And uh, if you're risking people's lives, that's incredibly, ins incredibly well, problematic. Well, they volunteered, Lewis. Right? They volunteered. Well, you know what I mean? The, 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 but he's always been on t he's, Do you know what? He's always been available. And yeah, kind yeah. of a laughing, <laughs> cheap, laughing stock, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like you know, people have like been like, "Oh, can you, can we get this cunt on TV for just just to <laughs> to talk about it in in a kind of?" And he's always been there. Do you know what I mean like, despite being, he's almost like debunk material. You know, everyone's debunked him I over think the years. James Randi debunked him, didn't he? I can't remember. Oh, I'm almost Randy certainly. Did. You know, but, but uh, he's always put himself out. Yeah. For I think he's just his name as well, Yuri Geller. He's always sat, it's, it's rolled off the tongue as kind of a weird sounding. Yeah. Name. He was on Big it Brother cool one. He was on Celebrity Big Brother one year, wasn't he? Oh, really? He? Like years ago. I think it was like in the early 2000s or something. Uh, but yeah, even then, he me. was kind of like a name from yesteryear, right? Like it was. Yeah. I mean, he's 76, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. He's, so we don't he's have a... to put up with him much longer. Is that what we're saying? Indeed. <laughs> Good. Oh, man. Good. Before we keep chatting bollocks, lads, we've got to talk about ExpressVPN. Oh. Who here uses ExpressVPN? Me, all the time. I do. Good. Yeah. Because if you don't use ExpressVPN, if you're trying to browse the internet without it, yeah. it's basically you're showing your ass to the entire world. It would be like forgetting to mute yourself on a Zoom call when you're on the toilet taking a poop. Oh uh, my god. When you're wow. in an important meeting with your boss, it would be humiliating. I've oh done no. that way too many times. Of course, because your ISP is taking a note and they're carefully writing down every single website you visit. Right. Are they listening <laughs> to it. me while I'm taking a dump as well? <laughs> they, they would be. <laughs> Jeez. If you weren't using ExpressVPN, you've We've got detected to use it, four plops. That must mean <laughs> that this plops. man needs more fiber. <laughs> it's a messy one. Mm. So you've got to use it. It reroutes your network data through a secure encrypted tunnel, much like the one your poop comes out of. Yes. So that your ISP cannot see or sell your online activity, which is a despicable move on the part of the ISP. Yeah. Break, break their monopoly on your data by using ExpressVPN. In order to support the podcast, you can do that by going to expressvpn.com slash Triforce today. I'm going to spell that for you. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Triforce. You get an extra three months free. Jesus That's ES Christ. ES I know. ExpressVPN dot com slash Triforce for three months free. Do it. Fudge. Now. Oh, my God. Aura frames. I need to talk about these because oh my God. they sent they sent us uh, an aura frame uh, when we started talking about aura frames. And we love it. Yes. Then they sent us another two. And I thought there had to have been some kind of mistake. I felt bad taking two aura frames, but they're like, no, please feel free to give them to your friends. We gave one to my father-in-law. So they came up the, at the weekend. We gave one of our spare ones to them and said, please enjoy this aura frame. You will love it. And uh, immediately get an email from my father-in-law, the first email I think I've had from him in 10 years, expressing his gratitude for the aura frames. This is no word of a lie and giving me a link to it so we can upload pictures of the kids to it. 
them to see. It is genuinely fantastic. Okay. I really, really, really do love Warriors. Uh, that's that's all fine and dandy, but listen to what I've done with mine. I've got a new show. We've just renovated our downstairs bathroom and it's and it's finished, just needs a floor. We got a new shelf in there that we could put like little like uh, plants and stuff on, you know, just to make it look nice or whatever. I got an aura frame in there and guess what pictures I've got on it. Pictures of you on the toilet. No, pictures of the old bathroom so that when you're sitting in the new one, you can look back in time and admire the old style of the bathroom. Like it's like wow. bathrooms That's through time. That's like a little mini museum. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, we love our aura frames. Father's Day is coming up, but if you have a father in your life that you'd like to give an aura frame to, you can go to auraframes.com slash Triforce. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash Triforce. Use the code Triforce and you get $30 off and free shipping on the best-selling frames. That deal ends on the 18th of June, so don't wait. Get your aura frame today. We gave 10 aura frames to 10 different dads. You won't believe what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of adventures, on the plane, I listened to one of the episodes of Criminal Podcast, which honestly is one of the only crime podcasts I can stand. The rest of them are like, James Mason, a 36-year-old man from Indiana, killed his wife, uh, Sandra Sheringham, at 36. Why did she do it? Let's find out. And it's like this whole wank attitude, right? There's a, a lot of these true crime podcasts are garbage. Uh, Criminal is one of the only ones which I listen to. Anyway, they, they did a podcast about The Wager, which is this um, story I had heard of before, where there's, um, it's like, a guy's just uh, released a book, which I saw in the airport as well, actually. It's just like, it's, so, you know, it's best-selling book, non-fiction, about sort of the history of what happened with this British ship, The Wager, right. back in, uh, back, back in the seven, late 1700s, when the, we went to war with Spain over something. Yeah, uh, I think it, I think it was in fact it's called the War of Jenkins Ear. Oh yeah, there was this there was this guy who was that held didn't up feature by a... in our top ten all time greatest wars. Um, did it that that particular? Uh, I don't know. I think no. When we did the sh do no, we, when did, we the did the war podcast tier about list. the greatest yeah. wars. Yeah, greatest. So wars hold on a sec. In history, you, my my computer must be listening to me more than usual because right. I typed War of and it auto completed to War of Jenkins Ear. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that is fucking. I like. I had not typed the J yet. I just typed "war of." Okay, I've typed and in "war of," completed. and it's come back with "war of the worlds," "the war of the worlds," "the war of the worlds," "war of the worlds," "the war right. of the roses." The I've war never of eighteen twelve. What's going on with my PC? I've never Googled "war of Jenkins." Ear this before. don't worry. It's probably because it's a lot of people are listening to this podcast. There's a and war talking of the world's immersive experience in London. Did you know? Uh, no. No, well, there. Anyway, there you go. It's just called. It's just called uh, Wembley, isn't it? <laughs> Wem Anyone lives I in think, Wembley? I think, Wembley. I think Wembley. back in these imperial times, England and Spain were looking to go to war over any old shit, and so oh yeah, um, someone had their ear cut off, and that was the excuse, and and so they sent this squadron of ships to basically. Steal a Spanish galleon that went back and forth to the Philippines with a lot of silver on it. So they've set five man of, man of wars out there, but uh, which were kind of a mess, right? The whole the whole thing was a mess because we didn't have enough sailors, so they had to press gang all these. It's a great story, right? But the first thing they had to do was they had to press gang in all of anyone who looked like a sailor. So they would literally go around Britain if anyone had tar on their fingers, because they you know that's what all sailors had back then. They would shut. They would put them in a bag and hoist them and they'd wake up on board a ship that was already a set sail, you know, it was, it was a disaster. They would just abduct people from across the country as well as they actually got like um, 500 retired sailors out of, the, um, out of the hospital in Chelsea, the old pensioners hospital. Some of them were so ill, they had to stretch them on board a ship, you know, just to make up the numbers for this expedition. And they'd all died within like you know six months all these all these guys it was it was an absolute disaster um and it's about the um so that so they sailed around the the south of south america which is cape horn it's it's this incredibly dangerous bit of ocean right where um the waters are very very fast and you know it's, it's almost like a pinch point where waves are like 90 foot high winds are like hurricane force constantly it's, it's horrible and they went around there at the worst time of year um, and it follows the story of this one ship that got shipwrecked in the, in, in the absolute middle of fucking nowhere in South America. And 
and the story of how they were able to survive and and get back. And I think they and they 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 each got back like that they they broke into two groups quite quickly and um kind of tried to work together and tried to like it was very noble there was a lot of like them even in 1740 they they tried to stick to like the the naval code of um authority and the captain taking charge but 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 they were also like they they were doing like court martials and kind of i don't know like tr trying to work together and be be honorable as well and like there's a lot of things and decisions that were made based on they didn't completely descend into anarchy some 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 people did some people just went mad and just drunk themselves to death and you know it's 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 a crazy story um and and um i really recommend the book actually i did pick it up in the airport and read it on the flight back nice um and I, honestly like i love this kind of stuff i love it gave me like Oprah Din vibes, you know, yeah. of the shipwreck and the survivors and that's cool. The captain busting out of his cabin with a pistol kind of thing. It's got everything. It's got a little bit of everything. No romance. Mm. God, um, thank God for that. I hate romance. No romance. I'm all romance Talking of Spoiler. A lack of Spoiler. romance. I, I finished Succession, ended on Monday. Yes. The, been watching the series. Yeah, what a show. I watched the end of that too. Oh, man. What a great show. Yeah, great I haven't show. I watched the end of it, yeah. I love one, that. Of, those, one I, of those things I think people will look back on in years to come and say, yeah, it's good, but it's not as good as Succession. That's a problem. Well, I think the nice thing with Succession as well is that it it knew when to end. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't feel fucking like drag it out. had to drag on and on and on. Like, imagine it came back for another season, and it was like a, a whole season of the latter half of yeah the final season. I don't think I would have enjoyed. No, that. I wanted it to end. Yeah, I was it glad for exactly it to end, right. and I was really satisfied with how it ended as well. Succession ended, and also uh, Flax, your favorite show, Ted Lasso, ended uh, this week as well. So last, glad it last ended. Episode. So glad it ended. Yeah, My yeah. God, this. Some... I was I was reading an article about it the other day. Um, I, I I just found this article, and it said. Ted Lasso has ended. Thank God. Yes, and I, I know I, the that article. That is exactly what it, I thought. Yeah, it was on the Guardian. You can't help I but think. yeah, as the Guardian. Yeah, you can't help but agree. As much as I I like the show, it's not a show that I would want to watch for any longer than. No, I don't want it anymore. It's been like the first season was really cute. We needed the first and series. Cute and comfy, and it came out at the right it, time. Yes, too, it was right? the right time. Yeah. Everybody was sad and yes, depressed, yes. and it was locked down, and we were all very sad. And it was great. It was what it we needed. It kind of started to lose its way a bit in the second season. And then second the, season, the, the it lost its third way very season, convincingly. The final season was a bit up and down and a little bit rushed as well. Like it, it not not that it mattered much. You know, I'm not I'm not talking like right. you know I'm 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 Game of Thrones mad at it because it it was it was rushed or whatever. But there was a load of stuff that felt like it was built up over the course of the series particularly in season two. And then just a lot of stuff kind of happened off camera in season three to, to sort of round it out. But it was uh. so like, it's not a complicated show either, right? Like you, you can, basically you can, you can predict what's going to happen 10 episodes yeah. away. Oh, yeah, you yeah. can, you can see how very obviously they're gearing up towards something or whatever. I'm pretty sure that while we were watching it, we were like, cause you know, the, the final episode was kind of as you'd expect as well. Every possible character and storyline wrapped up, you know. There in was, a pleasing way, in no a, in, a, in a fairly pleasing way, like a, like a perfect, Im perfectly imperfect way, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not everything was like 100% ideal, but everybody seemed pretty happy with their lot sort of thing. And it was, and it was oh, All I want to say fine. about it is it felt like the... F like like a band that had come out of nowhere and had an amazing first album yes that you really enjoyed yeah and has a lot of you know it was at the right time and yes. it was important and, and that was it yeah and then this the next two albums because they've done three series right? yeah yeah had flashes that reminded you of the first yeah but it never hit the same yeah. and in the end you began to resent those albums yeah. that's how it felt to me yeah. like they had spent really? all this time putting together their first album the first series of ted lasso and the it had started off as adverts for Premier League football on, I think, ESPN. Or yes. Yeah. So it was just originally some of the best jokes in the show 
would just lift like the press lifted right out of those, yeah, straight out of those, and that was like several years ago. Yes, so they'd obviously been working on it and honing it and getting it just right. Yeah, and got it made, and then they were like, "We need another couple of series." I was like, "Oh shit, we better write that." And it just lost all of the heart and it all of the humor. It was nominated for forty primetime Emmys, and it won eleven. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was at that point there really weren't that many other shows that people were losing their minds. No, on. we'd just yeah. been let down by G- Game of Thrones. Yes, you know, we we were grieving television at that point. We needed something. Yeah. but I watch it now, and it, there's no that all of the emotional payoffs feel so cheap. It feels yeah. like, oh, come on, yeah, man, yeah. stop manipulating me like that. One, you know, be- a big takeaway for me as well is that I think the show would have just fallen flat on its ass had it not been for uh, Rebecca, the uh, the owner of Richmond. She's she's phenomenal. She's so she's, fucking yeah. good. It's insane. She was great. She's at Eurovision such as well. a great actress. Like it's yeah. it's insane. Like in some scenes, you just think this is kind of throwaway TV, but she is really good. You know, like I'm excited to see what she does next because I think of of everyone in that show, she's the one that actually. Was I think good. she was actually in Game of Thrones. Um, she was. She was the shame lady. She was the shame lady. Yeah, in Game yeah. of Thrones, which is. But you wouldn't crazy. recognize her. No, you would not recognize her. No. And the other, the other one for me was uh, Roy Kent. I, I don't think the show would have been good without him. Honestly, he was yeah. such a such a good character, and so he here, was, here's he my was played so well. Like it was just it, it, there were so many times in the show where you just. He needed he, to he be was, there. He was, he was a good character, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But um, I, I did feel it, it, was a, it got a bit much after a while, because he's basically he's, he's Roy Kent all the time. Yes, it yeah. worked in series one, sure, I think. Sure, yeah. But when you start to show that, oh, Roy's a big softy at heart, it's like, it kind of loses some of its yeah. edge, I think. But <laughs> yeah. a, a piece of casting I never understood. Is it Keely? Is that her name? Yeah, Keely Jones, Keeley? yeah. I don't understand. I don't get it. She's awful. And I don't understand why she's like one of the main characters in the show. I, I can't stand her. Yeah. I, I don't I do not get it at all. I, I can I can sort of I can handle her in small doses, but when you have an episode where she's, you know, predominantly the, the storyline or whatever, it's it's a little bit grating. Like I it's not that I can't stand her. I don't I don't mind her as such, but I can I can I can have like too much of her as well, sort of thing. I would I be know. sick if I was hanging around with those people IRL. They're so fucking nice to each other. After a while, you just be like, "Come on!" I know, like, it's this- like it's ridiculous, isn't it? Like, <laughs> like, uh, like even like the entire team, you know, like they just rally around every little thing, you know, like yeah. they cheer each other on. Like somebody farts, and they're all like, "And I guess like maybe to some extent that does happen in a in no like a way. team environment or whatever." But like, I don't know. It is it is really selling you this this hyper idealized vision of of. Of life and stuff, isn't it? Like it doesn't really. Oh, I love. Just, I love how much. like their little corner of London is portrayed as well. Like this is a big. And that's my corner of London. It's like this big fucking dirty city, and like you know they just have their own little little bubble, you know, where they all know. I mean, maybe to some extent it's like that. Dude, too. that is that is know, my but... area. Like I'm not kidding, but but most of the show was filmed around Richmond and Twickenham. Yeah. It's just so I, I don't, that I don't was know, the that funny. was the hypest part about series one was seeing my neighborhood yeah. on TV. That was exciting, and it, it it doesn't look like the rest of London. It really doesn't. No, it's, yeah. That that was the that was the best part of the show. Yeah, for me, I did. I even did a, a thing on Instagram where I went and took pictures of areas where they filmed the, Ted Lasso. The Ted Lasso oh, really, places. that's yeah. fun. For all for all that, I think I think overall I liked it. I mean, you know, there's always going to be even shows I really like. There's always like some little little comments oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 whatever. I will take the Sopranos though. That didn't seem like it dragged itself out. I felt no. like that was good. Yeah, all Sopranos the way was really good all the way through. Another one I really liked was Six Feet Under all the way through. It was it's an uh, older HBO show, but it it's really really good. It's got um I can't remember his name. The guy who plays Dexter is in it yeah it's like one of his michael c Paul hall or whatever. or whatever i think it's yeah. maybe one of his first kind of big roles but he plays he, he's he's just, he's really good in it and the rest of the cast is really good and actually just the whole show is is just really well done it's really interesting mm-hmm. worth a watch but um yeah, and the yeah. wire as well i don't feel like that dragged on too long the final season no. of the wire was was probably for me the weakest but it was still fine you know like i agree i didn't agree i didn't mind it it was very these these shows are very influential in their time for sure about what, how people thought about stuff yeah I, it's i i'm glad to be back but i do already feel like maybe i saw the nicer 
areas of of the towns that I went to, and the, you know, you do see like the coiffured version on telly and on when you're on holiday, yeah. of places, right? You don't see the when you go to Vegas, you don't see your, you know the dirty rat corridors. Did you get a chance to pop into stuff. Mar-a-Lago or 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 anything, or no? You were just like too busy. Um, uh, well, I mean, Florida's just a dramatic place, right? You know, it's, it's <laughs> you didn't go to any rallies where you, while you were there or anything. I know it's a way. It is a dramatic because it's always a battleground state, yeah. right? And then it's got it's got Ron in it at the moment, and and Trump's Trump's ho- like hot ho- ho- you know Mar-a-Lago. Do you know what I mean it's 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 kind of a it, it punches above its weight, I think, in in how much news it gets, you know, from good and bad, but mostly bad. <laughs> You know, I feel like that, that there's a war, you know, the Ron DeSantis war with Disney and, and Disney being this mega corp. Did you, and, could you um, feel the vibes while you were there or, or no? It was just like business as usual. Well, I, I don't know how they get anything done because it's so hot, right? I, I mean, like, I don't know who, who built all of this in the heat. I feel sorry <laughs> for them, you know? It's so like. You know what? There, there's a little, there's, there's quite a few forts in Florida. Um, on the on the east coast, I think probably more than the west. And there's one we went to visit that was like a, a British fort. Where the hell is and Fort Lauderdale? Why does that always Fort Fort Lauderdale? Right. It well, no, this it, was, that's this a is, city in Florida. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for this is literally a teeny teeny tiny little fort, but it's watching the sort of waterway approach that you would take to go up this river towards I, I think towards Saint Augustine or somewhere like that. So it's like a little guard fort that had like a cannon, because you wouldn't be able to sail a big ship up there, but equally if you sailed a little sloop or some little ship up there, you could presumably make it, or a landing craft or whatever. So they, that little fort with a couple of cannons in there to sort of dissuade people from doing that. It's in the middle of nowhere, it's guarding a swamp, because it's basically guarding a river, and I imagined how fucking shit a posting that must have been, given that they would have had to wear those old wool uniforms all the time with their fucking hats, and they're just living in the swamp. There's no AC. There's no bug repellent. You're just getting bitten to death by mosquitoes, and there's nothing yeah. to do. You're stuck. What in did a they fucking use swamp. for like suntan cream? I do don't know. I mean, they just burned. But they had to have long sleeves and hats. I and... mean, these were British soldiers, so they're not going to tan well. A lot of them are just going to turn pink. What was the turnover rate for for true? It was like, I'm going to post you to the river fort. No, please, sir. Please, I'll do better. You know, it must have been a miserable bloody post. I think it. I think it was like pretty miserable back in the day. I mean, like the the things that hit. So going back to the wager, like before they even crossed the Atlantic, like half of them had died of scurvy and fucking typhoid, right? Yeah, and that was just part of what you expected because scurvy basically set in after a month on ships. Because they, they, you know, they were eating salted not on pork Captain and, Cook's ships and biscuits. Well, yeah, I don't know how they got away with it, but as I'll soon as you go how. to land, and eat a, a little bit of okay. sauerkraut. Yeah, that's what he used. It's, I think it's called an anti-scorbutic. Is anything that prevents scurvy? And he realized they didn't know the science of it, but he, they, other sailors had done this, and he'd studied a lot of other sort of sailing and and the the way other crews were and. He was one of the first British officers to insist on bringing barrels of sauerkraut, and the men hated having to eat it. But he was like, "No, you're eating it." And he didn't lose a single sol- um, sailor to scurvy his entire career. Wow, wow. that's true. Well, that is true. Well, I think he was slightly after the wager. Uh, so I he was like were... 18th century. Um, yes, sailor. yeah, he was. He was, and and. Anyway, you know, they, 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 but at the time they had this sort of, you know, Mr. Magoo's marvelous medicine, which was basically arsenic and right. antimony and mercury and stuff like this. You know what I mean, it was just, yeah, they didn't know it what was, they were it doing. Was, it was called like, um, it was like a purge medicine, right? It would make you vomit and have diarrhea and, you know, like it would basically make you just like purge everything, <laughs> which, uh, which was obviously not going to help if you were starving to death. No. Um, do you reckon often, like, especially with the whole use of mercury as a medicine, do you think they just thought, wow, look at this stuff. <laughs> this has got to be good I can't wait to get this yeah. in me. Eat, eat that. It's going to be amazing for you. I mean, the, I guess they, they didn't have any other way of knowing. And, yeah, it looks yeah. like magic. I think a lot of people just ate a lot of shit, and if they didn't die immediately or have their tongue swell up, you know, they just were like, okay, you know, uh, I, guess, I guess that's good for me. I mean, here's right? your success proof, right? I make you take mercury, 
you recover from whatever it is that you had through natural means, not because of the mercury. And I say, fucking mercury worked, didn't it? That's literally mm. medicine in the olden days. They would give you whatever, and if you somehow persisted through the awful treatment and lived, they were like, wow, that mercury worked to treat. I'm going to make a note in my medical journal. If a patient has terrible fevers, give them mercury. This is exactly how like conspiracy theories get going as well, right? Uh, like People make these connections because they want to see connections, and they are... Uh, the the brain loves to to make these link these these events together or or have an explanation. I read a little book about conspiracy theories when I was on holiday as well. Oh yeah, it's, it's fascinating um, how they how they get started. Like like the Illuminati, right? <laughs> Which everyone's heard of now. Back they got started because they were a, a group of people who were around the Enlightenment. They were enlightened people. They believed in. Uh, free speech, free freedom of religion. Is this the Bavarian equality. Illuminati, an, yeah, a, an they, enlightenment era secret society? They founded believed in, on the first of May, seventeen seventy six. How about they that? were originally, you know, very much on the, <laughs> very much supposed to be like kind of good guys, right? They wanted, they wanted to like fight against the, um, the current sort of. Abuses of state power that were going on at the time. Apparently, they and wanted they... to oppose superstition as well and obscurantism, whatever that is. Yeah, and to and... make make things more publicly visible. But they were a secret society, which is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, well, this one guy made a lot of bad decisions about how. Anyway, it was a fascinating bit of history. But what happened was obviously they start they 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 weren't secret of course because nothing remains a secret very long right and as soon as as soon as the 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 state found out that they were being plotted against by this by this group they basically decided that they were going to um blame them uh for everything that was going wrong and as this because no one could say that they weren't and so the, the illuminati obviously got shut down but they kept that they it was such a good scapegoat right that you could just say oh that's, that's the illuminati trying to you know, and the Illuminati, like when you when you start believing in conspiracy theories, right? You are more likely to engage in the behavior that you think they were doing, right? So, for example, if you think that that that, that, that the Democrats are trying to steal the election, you're more likely to try and steal the election. There was uh, a conspiracy to to rig the last election, but it wasn't mm. the Democrats who were doing it. It was the Republicans who thought the Democrats were doing it doing it themselves to fight against it, right? <laughs> so there's this, there's this strange thing that sort of happens where you get sucked into these, 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 these ideas, partly because, well, the big things in the book, actually, it talks about, I could talk to you about this next week more if you're interested, but, um, well, the big things the book goes into is how a massive world-affecting uh, event, like 9-11 or Kennedy assassination or Princess Diana dying, one of these huge events spawns conspiracy theories because the solution to it doesn't match the size of the impact of the of the event itself, right? Like nine eleven, you know, couldn't just be um, a few terrorists flying aircraft. It also had to be the government bombing, putting bombs in there, or you know, or, yeah. or doing some big conspiracy. You know, Kennedy, it couldn't have just been one crazy guy. It had to be a whole conspiracy. You know, it had to be all of this stuff. There's there's always been, you know, a more elaborate thing to match. Almost like, like we we see history in this way of looking almost backwards at it. Like we know these huge landmark events happened. So why didn't the people at the time know that they were landmark events? Well, because people can't predict the future, right? And also these people, these 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 moments were sure they were big then, but over oh, history has decided what events were the biggest ones that we really have remembered. So yeah, it's 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 really interesting to look into that where these things got started and what, what drives Yeah, we should do that next week. Conspiracy right, theories. Can I um can oh. I share with you uh one thing quickly before we go? I installed a new graphics card recently and it took me hours. You know, like uh <laughs> really? modern like well because I had really? to get a new power supply and everything. Cause like it had all, right, all okay. the wrong plugs. So I had to unplug the the old power supply from everything and then plug put in the new power supply and plug it all into everything and it took me hours to do it and uh it was one of those you know when you've done a lot of stuff and you just think i'm gonna turn my computer on and it's gonna blow up or 
Mm. It's not going to work. You know, I'm going to go down this rabbit hole of needing a whole bunch of replacement bits and pieces and stuff like that. But I turn it on. Boom. Worked first time. I couldn't believe it. Oh, baby. Uh, Felt great. Yeah. I I did. I did some some minor home stuff. Two things. First of all, I finally bought a good toolbox, like a bag, a bag that you put all your tools in. It's got all pockets. Oh, nice. I'm 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 looking forward to organizing that because that's some real dad shit. That is some real dad shit. Yeah. And second of all, my my youngest, she had a bunk bed that wasn't really a bunk bed. I think they call it a cabin bed. Yeah. So it's like a, a bunk bed top, and then underneath you can have like a little desk. Storage. And yeah, yeah. My kids have yeah. those too, yeah. Right. So she didn't want the bottom bit anymore. She wanted a bed on the ground. She was sick of sleeping up top. Sure. Sick of going up and down the ladder. And I was like, and also it's hard for her to make her bed because it's up there. It's yeah, kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's good yeah, when they're enough. really small, but as they get bigger. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So how do you do this? What you have to do is unscrew the top bit from the bottom section, which is big and quite heavy, and then hold the bunk bed up while you slide all that other stuff out, and then lower the bunk bed down. And this was harder than it looked, because the whole thing was in the corner, mm-hmm. and we built it there. Like, it was too heavy to drag around the room, and there, there isn't really enough room to, to do it anyway. So I had to get Mrs. F and my eldest to hold the bed up at one end, and then I unscrewed the other end, and got my, my youngest and me dragged the other bit out, so now I'm just holding up the bed alone, but I can't hold it up from a good angle. I'm underneath it. Yeah, so now we have like to a lower traditional it down. family argument. Type. No, 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 it wasn't an argument. I just allowed the bed to slowly crush me to the no, ground. But I imagine there were a lot of shouting. There was like, no hold shouting. It up. Hold he it. Was no, no, there crushed. was no shouting. He was being so was no crushed. He was taking The only it. shouting was my youngest saying, Daddy, you're going to get crushed by the bed. And I was like, no, I'm okay. So I lay on my back like a beetle and gradually lowered the bed using my legs and then crawled out from underneath it. It was not that's very That's an incredible elegant. move, actually. But it worked. Yeah. It, it worked. Well, that's it. You can, sometimes you just got to do what, what works, right? And You got to do you it. You just got to do yeah. it. Oh, I also went to go see a punk rock show in Leeds. Uh, I, was gone, oh, wow. I was gone for less than 24 hours from my house, but uh, it was you, worth but it. But you left the island? I left the island, yeah. By myself. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah, that is I went unusual. on a plane. I landed. I got in a car. I went to the show. I had a good time. I had a little sleep and then boom, right back onto the plane, home. I was back. I, I think I was gone for Who 22 hours in wow. total. I went to, I went to see I was, No I FX was, in their I final UK show. yesterday for longer than that. <laughs> no FX, the band with- The band with, with no, yeah, with- fe- What's her name? No in? FX. Yeah. No, no wow. FX. Is she still in the band? With what's her name? I didn't think it was ever- Oh, wrong. I'm thinking of someone else. You might be thinking of someone else, yeah. Oh, no effects. Oh, like they're like the old band. Yeah, they're with Fat Mike. Yeah, with Fat Mike. Yeah, they're. Yeah, I was Mike. thinking of uh, no. What was it called? Uh, Don't speak. No, oh no, that's no right. doubt. No Gwen doubt. Stefani. Right. Yeah, yeah, thought, that one. I thought, wow, <laughs> no, you traveled no. to see No Doubt. No, I did not yeah. travel to see No Doubt. No, okay. I went to go see right, No Effects, and uh, it's their, it's their, they're, they're done touring. I think they're almost sixty, so they're just like, yeah, you know yeah, what, yeah. we're done touring. I think they'll still make music. But Fat Mike uh, opened up a museum in Las Vegas called the Punk Rock Museum, Mm. which is kind of interesting because you can actually um, get guided tours from people who are in bands, like uh, including him. From Dale Chihuly. Yeah, you get Dale Chihuly does a a day where he does (laughs) uh, guided tours. What's his name? Doug McClellan will turn up and he's got his mother-in-law there. Oh, the whole, everybody there can give you a tour of the history of punk rock if you want to, if you live in Las Vegas and you want to do that sort of thing. There's other punk rock museums available, but that's, that, that is the most recent one I've heard of. Is it? Is the, is their name meant to be No Fucks? No, no, no effects. It's based off a band that they used to listen to called Negative Effects, and then ah, they just called ooh. themselves No Effects. Apparently, I could be wrong Fair about okay. this. I'm sure somebody will write in correcting me, but this is just what I've read. Was it good? It was good. Yeah, it was really good. It was um. So they 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 they're doing this thing where I don't think they want to think about it too much, but so they'll they they just play two albums. And then, you know, there's a couple of little bits and pieces in between. So the first album that they played was an album called Punk and Drublick, which is probably their most famous album. Came out in 95. I remember it from being a teenager because it was, you know, the, the, the skate punk era and everybody mm-hmm. loved listening to all, all of that music and skateboarding and stuff. So I remember the album coming out and I remember getting it. And then they played another album called Wolves and Wolves Clothing, which came out in 2006. By then, I had didn't really, I, I didn't follow them much or listen to them much. It's, uh, it's more like a nostalgic thing for me, you know? Like, there's a band that I used to listen to as, mostly as a teenager that I'd come back to time, 
time to time to listen to as an adult or whatever. But um, yeah, it was good. So like half of the show, I knew all the songs and <laughs> could sing along. And then, you know, the other half is just like, oh yeah, this 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 is definitely no effects. I just have not listened to any of these songs before. Or, you know, I've heard them mm. in games or, or something like that, but not like the full album sort of thing, you know? So it was good though. It was really, really good. They're, they're on stage. I don't know if you've ever seen them perform live or whatever, but their, their banter on stage and between songs and stuff is always pretty funny. They're just sort of this chaotic band of, um, you know, drug addicts and alcoholics and stuff and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh it's it was good it was a good time i went with a couple of friends it was good to see them too it was just nice it's good oh i thought you'd literally gone alone no 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 i didn't go didn't go alone and then uh and next up is uh blur at wembley stadium baby <laughs> 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 oh boy that's gonna be fun too i can't wait enjoy i've never been to wembley right. stadium before so oh it's so well, yeah it looks fantastic we're, we're looking forward we're to hearing about that we're gonna stop then aren't we we've because... got to stop this podcast yes. yeah. But thank you. We will be back next week. And uh, have a lovely time, everyone. See you then. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.